Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the concept of molarity as a way of looking at concentrations of things, especially within solutions. So when we look at a solution here, and what we see what is a solution. First of all, it is a homogeneous mixture. So it's nice and uniform throughout and may contain different compounds all mixed together. So you know from uh, experience some solutions some things don't mix well together like oil and water and tend to separate out. Other things will mix within a solution and give it a more homogeneous mixture. We also are going to be looking at concentration, which is the relative amount of one of the components of the solution. So we'll look at one component and compare that to the total amount of the solution. And when we look at a solution, we have the solvent and the solute. The solvent is the component that has the greater quantity and in fact a vastly greater quantity. So there is a lot more of the solvent in it. So if you mix something into water, then water would be your solvent. And that's often what we call an aqueous solution where something is dissolved in water. But if we put salt in water, for example, there is far more water than there is salt. The solute is the component that has the lower quantity. So that would be the salt solution. And it would be it could be dilute or concentrated depending on how high the concentration is. So a low concentration is diluted and a high concentration would be concentrated. Now when we look at molarity, which is the next concept we want to look at. The definition of it is the number of moles of the solute. So what has been dissolved in exactly one liter of the total solution. So how many moles there are divided by the liters of solution gives us capital M here the molarity. Now we can look at some examples of this. And let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with a 355 millimeter soft milliliter soft drink. And it contains 0.133 moles of sucrose. So what is the molar concentration of sucrose in the beverage? Well, we write down what we know. So we know the volume is 355 milliliters. And always remember, we have to convert that into SI units. So that is 3.355 liters. And we know that there is 0.133 moles of sucrose. So the molarity is simply the moles of the solute, which we have here, 0.133, divided by the number of liters of solution, and if we divide those two, we find that the molarity is 0.375. That is the number of moles per one liter of the solution. Now, there are more examples of this that we can look at as well. And let's go ahead and do another one. How many moles of sugar are there in a sip of the soft drink? So how many moles are there in 10 milliliters of that drink from the previous example? So we know the molarity now it was 0.375 remember we determined that in the previous solution the volume we're looking at is 10 milliliters or 0 0.01 liters and then we can use the molarity equation where the moles of molarity equals the moles of solute divided by the liters of solution and we now want to rearrange that equation because now we are looking for the moles of the solute. We are looking for how much sugar is here. And we know the molarity because we determined that previously. We know the amount of the solution. And we can therefore go ahead and calculate this putting in the numbers we have. And when we multiply those out, note how the liters will cancel. And we will just get the number of moles of sugar and we find that that would be 0 0.004 moles. Now it's a small number, but remember that each mole is the Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So that is a lot of sugar molecules. So in our next example, we are going to be looking at vinegar. Vinegar is acetic acid given by CH3CO2H in water. 
And we're looking at a 0.5 liter vinegar solution, which contains 25.2 grams of acetic acid. And we want to figure out the molarity. Now remember from to find molarity, we need to find moles. So how do we convert grams into moles? Well, we did that in the last section. So we put our numbers that we know here for volume and for the mass. And we can then calculate the molar mass here. We know that there are two carbon atoms, two oxygen, and four hydrogen atoms. And by using their atomic masses, we can then figure out the atomic mass uh, of the acetic acid, which is 60.052 grams per mole. Now that we know that, then we can go ahead and use our molarity equation and put the values in that we know. And we know the number of grams, 25.2. We convert that into moles using our molar mass here. And then we divide that by the number of liters of the solution, which we know is half a liter. And if we do that, we would find that the molarity of this solution is 0.839 moles molar. So it is a, a little under one mole per liter of solution. Now our next example involves looking at how many grams of sodium chloride are contained in 0 0.250 liters of a 5.3 molar solution. So this time we know the volume and we know the molarity and we're going to be looking for the number of grams of sodium chloride. So as you remember our equation will give us the number of moles so we can find the number of moles of sodium chloride from the molarity equation and we can rearrange that to find the moles of the solute is equal to the molarity which was 5.3 multiplied by the volume of 0.25. When we do that, we find that there are 1.325 moles of sodium chloride. However, we're not done because we want to find out how many grams that is. Well, just as we did, we're going to look for the formula mass. We know that sodium has a specific atomic mass and so does chlorine. When we add them together, we can get the formula mass for sodium chloride. And we can then use that to go ahead and calculate the convert the moles into grams and we will find that 1.325 moles of sodium chloride multiply that by the formula mass and find out that this would then be 74 sorry 77.4 grams of sodium chloride so again we're using the samples here if we're looking for grams we may need to go ahead and calculate that formula mass or the molar mass that we've used previously in order to convert moles into grams. Now we're going back to another acetic acid problem and the molarity of that solution is 0.839 and we want to find the volume of vinegar that would contain 756 grams of acetic acid. So again, we have grams in there, but let's go ahead and start out. What we want is the grams of the solute times the moles of the solute divided by the grams is equal to the moles. So we can also use the moles of solute times liters of solution. And that should look very familiar to give us the number of liters of solution. So what we find is if we put all this together, we can take the grams of the solute so how many grams were in there? That's something we know. Times the moles of solute divided per gram and the liters per mole will give us the number of liters solution. How do we know? Well, the grams cancel here, the moles cancel here, and we're left with just the number of liters of solution. And if we put in what we know here, and some of this we've determined from previous problems. Remember that we figured out how many moles per gram there were of acetic acid in a previous example in this lecture. And we know the molarity from uh, that was given to us the number of liters of solution uh, per the molarity and everything cancels here. So the grams uh, cancel here. The moles cancel here and we're going to be left with the number of liters of solution which would then be 1.5. So 1.5 liters of solution would contain of, of this molarity 0.839 would contain 756 grams of acetic acid. Now the other thing that we want to look at in this section is dilution and how we can figure out dilutions. And the dilution equation is given here. 
that we look at concentration times volume and it's a ratio here concentration of one times the volume of one is equal to the concentration of two times the volume of two. So dilution occurs when more solvent is added and that lowers the concentration so you will have a lower concentration so you can think of it as adding more water if water is your solvent and that would then decrease the con the concentration and we can use this equation to calculate this. So let's look at an example and how we can do this. Our example here is going to look at we are going to have a 0.85 liter solution of a 0.5 molar solution of copper nitrate and it is dil diluted to 1.8 liters by adding water and we want to find the new molarity. So we know the original concentration of 5 molar. We know the original volume of 0.85 liters. We know the new volume of 1.8 liters and we can then use our equation C1V1 equals C2V2. Well, we know three of these things. We know C1, we know V1, and we know V2. So we can then solve for the unknown, which is C2. And that will be equal to C1 V1 divided by V2. Well, we said we know all those numbers. We can put them in. And C2 will therefore be equal to 2.36 molar. It'll have a molarity of 2.36. Now, of course, when you're doing one of these, if you're adding more solute in, in this case, or sorry, solvent in this case, your molarity will have to decrease. So it went from 5.6, 5, sorry, 5 exactly, down to 2.36. Now, let's look at one more example of this. And what we see is we're going to take the volume of a 0.12 molar uh, uh, acid, hydro hydrobromic acid that can be prepared from 11 milliliters of a 0.45 molar solution. So we want we know the final concentration now. So we look at what we know. And we know the volume of 11 milliliters, we convert that into liters, we know the concentrations. So we know the uh, initial concentration here is 0.45 molar. We know the final concentration is 0.12 molar. And we now know all but one thing and we're looking for the volume. How much of this lower solution can we make? And we can figure that out using our equation. Solving for V2, which is the unknown. And then putting on in our numbers that we know and finding that we would be able to make 0 0.041 liters of this solution. So we were able to dilute it a little bit more and get a lower molarity solution, but we have more than the 0.11 liters of the more concentrated solution that we started with. Now one more example before we finish up here and what we're going to look at is uh, what it takes to what the volume is of a 1.59 molar potassium hydroxide is required to prepare five liters of a 0.1 molar. So we have a higher concentration here. We're going to dilute it quite a bit. And we want to prepare five liters. So we want to know how much of the higher concentration we need. Well, we know a volume. And we know the two concentrations. And we can again use our molarity, uh, our concentration equation here. And if we solve for what we don't know, which is V1, we're trying to find how much we need. So V1 is equal to C2 V2 divided by C1. And if we put in our numbers, then we will see uh, we know everything that we know can calculate and we can put in a point find out that it is 0.314 liters that we would need to make a five liter solution. So this much higher concentration solution then diluted with water would bring it down to a 0.314. We would need 0.314 liters of that higher concentration to produce five liters of this lower concentration. So let's go ahead and finish up here with our summary and what we looked at in this lecture. The relative amount of a solution is its concentration. It's the amount of the solute of a given solution component is what we call the concentration. The solvent is the one with the significantly greater concentration. The solute has the much smaller concentration. And we looked at the molarity of a solution is the number of moles 
in one liter. And we also looked at some examples of concentration and how to calculate different concentrations for things being diluted. So that concludes this lecture on molarity. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.